గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ మై డియర్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు విద్య ఆరాధన అకాడమీ ఏ ప్రీమియర్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఫర్ నీట్ కోచింగ్ ఓకే సో హియర్ బిఫోర్ స్టార్టింగ్ విత్ ద డెమో లెక్చర్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ విల్ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ మై సెల్ఫ్ మై సెల్ఫ్ డాక్టర్ వై ఎన్ గజపతి వర్మ ఐ డిడ్ మై ఎంఎస్సీ అండ్ పిహెచ్డి సో హియర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ద బ్రీఫ్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ సో సిన్స్ వీ నీడ్ టు స్టార్ట్ విత్ ద లెక్చర్ సో సింప్లీ ఇన్ షార్ట్ ఐ విల్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఆర్ ఐ విల్ గివ్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ రిగార్డింగ్ మై సెల్ఫ్ సే ఐ కంప్లీటెడ్ మై బ్యాచులర్స్ డిగ్రీ విత్ బయోటెక్నాలజీ బయోకెమిస్ట్రీ అండ్ కెమిస్ట్రీ యాజ్ మేజర్ సబ్జెక్ట్స్ సో ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ సో లైక్ యూ ఆఫ్టర్ ట్వెల్త్ క్లాస్ యూఆర్ రైటింగ్ ఫర్ నేషనల్ లెవెల్ ఎంట్రన్స్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్స్ సో ఐ ఆల్సో రోట్ సమ్ నేషనల్ లెవెల్ ఎంట్రన్స్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్స్ సో దేర్ ఐ గాట్ సి హియర్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద లిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ర్యాంక్స్ ఐ గాట్ సో ఫర్ ద బెనారస్ హిందూ యూనివర్సిటీ ఫర్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ దట్ ఈజ్ ఎంఎస్సీ బయోకెమిస్ట్రీ ఐ గాట్ ఆల్ ఇండియా థర్డ్ ర్యాంక్ అండ్ ఫర్ పాండిచేరి సెంట్రల్ యూనివర్సిటీ subject that is msc molecular biology and biochemistry there i got all india fourth rank and then for the uoh university of hyderabad which is popularly called as hyderabad central university there for the subject that is msc animal biotechnology i got the all india eighth rank so here in this university that is university of hyderabad so i have joined five joined for my post graduation and there i have completed my msc animal biotechnology so during this post graduation we need to do some research project so i did my research project under the guidance of the founder director of national institute of animal biotechnology who is professor p redana okay so this is a very very premier institute and you need to remember this since there is a chapter that is called as biotechnology in 12th class you need to remember this where this is located nib is located in hyderabad please remember this they may ask in neat examination also okay so after the completion of this again i have started writing some national level examinations to get fellowship during my phd course so here what i did is see here i wrote many national level examinations so i have cleared many of them and some of them i have mentioning here so i have cleared council of scientific and industrial research cscr and ugc university grants commission net along with jrf both net and jrf i got and there i got all india 65th rank and not only that i have also got icmr jrf indian council of medical science research okay so i got that jrf also but anyhow i have availed only that csr ugc jrf for my phd okay so i also cleared the gate with 95 percentile and then i have also selected for bark baba atomic research center and i have also qualified for iisc indian institute of science bangalore okay so but finally i have joined in university of hyderabad for the phd and successfully i have completed my phd from there okay so during my phd so i have attended some conferences so here i got second prize for poster presentation in the national level seminar and during my phd so i have published some research articles so these research articles you can directly get from the internet so simply in the search engine google search engine you just type my name that is y n gajpat verma so that you will get this list so there so here www.researchgate.net is there so you just simply click on it so that you will get what are the different publications i have so this is one and this is the second one and this is the third one so actually this third one is actually this is based on my pg project post graduation project and these two are related to my phd project and these are also having very high impact so since you don't know about impact factor so for your easy understanding i am saying that so those if impact factor value is high so the quality of research that we are doing is high okay so usually those who are getting one and two they are feeling very great so here i got 4.235 and this was published in international journal so that is frontiers in microbiology and another one so i got it in oxford journal so it was published in oxford journal which is having the impact factor of 5.439 so this is a having very huge impact so that means it is a very good quality of research i did and with the help of this data so we have also applied for the patent also so this is the patent application that we have filed okay and then so regarding my other qualifications so during this journey so i have written so many other entrance examinations so i have qualified for territorial army so also for uh, andhra pradesh police services indian railways andhra pradesh public service commission and food corporation of india okay and coming to the my teaching experience so i have the teaching experience of nearly 6 years so in that 
the last three years, recent three years, I have completed from Rajarshi Shahu Mahavidyalaya Latur. Okay, so this is what some brief introduction regarding myself. Yes, so here what we are doing is, so this is a demo lecture for you. Yes, so here I am taking a simple topic from the genetics. So why I have selected this because already regarding the genetics, regarding the Mendelian genetics, regarding Mendel's monohybrid cross, already you have studied in the 10th class. So if I take that, you can easily understand. Yes or no? So that is the reason why the one that you all that is already known to you, the same thing I have taken here. And what is the aim in taking this one? I am directly telling you this. The important point is, till now, up to the class 10, you have already studied whatever I am saying here, that Mendel's a tall dwarf and all those things, already you studied. The same concept once again I will explain. But the point is, that till now, you are writing in the form of subjective, not for the objective. But the neat examination is mainly focused on objective mode. So, in this case what happens is, so the way we are preparing for the examination will be slightly different. So till now how it will be, suppose, whenever you are not able to understand some concept, if you can by heart it, it is okay. The same thing you can write in the examination so that you will get the marks. But here in the neat examination it is not like that, because it is objective mode, and here it is more analytical. So whatever the concept you know, that concept you need to analyze. And they will not ask for 4 marks or 8 marks. Simply they will give one statement, so whether it is true or false. Or sometimes they will ask some question and only one word answer will be given. So out of the 4 options you need to select only one. So in that case, the way we are analyzing should be little bit important. So here what we are doing is, that is the reason why the concept that is already known to you was selected for the demo. So now, how we are able to analyze it in different way for the examination? And how was our preparation till now? And how it should be from now? And these two are important ones for you. Is that now? So when we are focusing for the multiple choice type of questions, each and every word, each and every image, table, Everything that was given in NCRT is important. And here another important point we need to remember is, in the NCRT what they did is, they have given the theory, and all the points in the theory they did not mention the diagram. And some diagrams and tables they have mentioned. And all the content of that diagrams and table they did not mention the theory. That means there are some points which are there only in the diagram, which are present only in the table which are present only in the summary which is present at the end of the chapter. Likewise, they have kept it. So now we need to focus on each and every point and then we need to study for examination. Yes or no? So now let us start with this direct one. So what is this genetics? Simply genetics is the branch of biology which is dealing with inheritance and variation. Yes or no? So it is dealing with two important points. Please remember this. What are those? One is inheritance. Inheritance. And second one is variation. What is this inheritance and what is this variation? Inheritance means what? Suppose your father is purchasing some particular land. So that land automatically it is coming to you. Yes or no? Suppose your grandfather is purchasing some land. So by heredity, by inheritance, that land is coming to your father and from there it is coming to you. Similarly, here, here the same thing only. Here inheritance, we are not talking with respect to property. Here we are talking with respect to some characters. Some characters. What are these characters? Suppose what is the type of hair? Whether it is straight or wrinkled, curvy or wild type, likewise different will be there. Suppose it is the eye color, so whether it is blue, black, brown, likewise, here inheritance of some particular characters we are studying. Understood, no? So genetics is dealing with inheritance of characters. What this inheritance means? So characters which are moving from one generation to next generation. That means parents to the offspring. Offspring is nothing but the children only. Okay? Parents to the offspring. Again, this offspring to next generation. That generation to next generation. Suppose it is moving on like this. It is called as inheritance. So how characters are moving from one generation to another generation? If we study that, 
it is called as inheritance. So that is one part that we are studying under genetics. Very good. Next one. Next one that we are studying is variation. What is the variation? See here in the NCRT, how they have started is mango seed is always giving rise to mango plant only. Elephant always gives birth to elephant only. That we can easily understand. But the important point is, though it is giving rise to that elephant only, though mango seed is giving rise to mango plant only, are there any differences between parent and offspring? Any differences that are present between these two, please remember this, the differences, the differences present between parents and the next generation that is children. So these differences are called variation. See here, parents and children are not 100% same. There are some slight differences and those differences are called as variation. And not only between parents and children, within the children also, there are some variations. Yes or no? Suppose your brother or sister, all of them are not exactly same. Exactly same only in the case of identical twins. We are not worried about that. That is a separate case. Leave it. But in all other cases, they are not same. They are different. So these differences among the offspring, that means among the children, is also called as a variation. So in this way, genetics is dealing with inheritance and a variation. Yes, this is the basic important point. So next what we are doing is, so within the genetics, directly we are going into the demo topic. So that is regarding the Mendelian genetics. So anyhow, you know that who is the father of classical genetics? Who is the father of classical genetics? It is Mendel. Yes or no? Mendel is the father of genetics. So I will tell you a few important points regarding the Mendel because some things that we need to learn from the Mendel are there and they are very important for NEET also. What are those? See, even before to Mendel also, many scientists, they worked on the pattern of inheritance. Many scientists, they performed experiments. But they did not get the exact conclusions like whatever that were obtained by the Mendel. What is the problem there? Why they didn't get? But why Mendel obtained this? Please remember here. So this is very, very important for us also. First one is planning. Planning. So here, for the Mendel, what is the planning? How to perform the experiment. And for us, what is the planning? How to prepare for the NEET examination. Second one. Second one is obtaining the data and then analysis of data. Analysis of data. After performing the experiment, he, is obtain he has obtained some data. And that data analysis should be done properly. See, the ma major problem is, suppose, sometimes when we are asking some question in examination, different students are analyzing the same question in different way. That is a very good thing. But the thing is, sometimes they are interpreting the question in a wrong way. And that should not be done. If we are having some wrong approach, we cannot get the right answer. Is yes that no? So here what he did is, whatever the data he obtained, he has analyzed it in the correct way. So what we have to do is, whatever the theory that we are studying from the NCRT, that we need to analyze in the correct way, so that we can easily answer, so that we can get the success. So third one is a success. But here there is a problem. Has Mendel got success or not? Yes, obviously he got the success. That's why today we are calling him as father of genetics. But the important point is, no one has recognized whatever Mendel said. Yes or no? When Mendel was alive, when Mendel was alive, no one has not recognized this. After the death of Mendel, three scientists, they have rediscovered whatever Mendel said. So then actually Mendel came into the light and now we are studying this as Mendel's laws or Mendel's principles are simply principles of inheritance. Yes or no? So in this way the thing is, see he did all these things but when he survived or when he is alive at that time he did not get the recognition but since whatever he did is 100% true, later on other scientists recognized. 
So in this way, what we need to learn from the Mendel is whatever the duty that we are doing, that we need to do perfectly. Don't worry about the success. So now people may not be able to recognize us. But when the time goes on or the passes on, people will definitely recognize that. So one day, that success, that definitely you will get it. Please remember this. So these are the three important ones. Yes? So now what we are doing is, under the Mendel's experiments, first we are studying about the mono-hybrid cross. We are studying about mono-hybrid cross. Don't worry, I will explain about each and every word in detail. Okay? So already regarding the mono-hybrid cross, you studied about this. So Mendel studied about total how many characters? Mendel studied about a total seven characters, like plant height, yes, flower color, flower position, pod shape, likewise, many are there. Anyhow, all those things we will study in the regular class. We don't need to discuss all of them under this demo lecture. So here, out of all these things, the important one is regarding plant height. Plant height. Please remember this. Plant height is one such character that was studied by the Mendel. Okay, so now what we are doing is, so here, in this, in this, here, we are mainly focusing on that particular character that is called as plant height. That is called as plant height. Plant height. Please remember this, for the same thing, they may use the term that is called as stem height. Plant or stem height. So for this character, actually there are two traits. These traits also you have studied. What are those two? One is called a dominant trait. What is the dominant trait? One is dominant trait. So what is that dominant trait? That dominant trait is nothing but tall. So what is it? Tall plant is dominant. And the other trait is recessive trait recessive trait. So anyhow, you know about what is the dominant and recessive. So that is the reason why I am not once again explaining what is dominant and recessive. If you are keep on explaining all those things, so we cannot complete that monohybrid cross. So that's why we are directly going there and some important logics that we will study. And what is the recessive trait here? The recessive trait is dwarf. Yes or no? So out of the seven characters studied by Mendel, one character is plant height or stem height. And this character has uh, two traits. One is a dominant trait and another one is recessive trait. And for this the dominant trait is uh, tall and recessive is uh, dwarf plant. So these are some basic points that you already know. So now what I am doing is directly I will show you the image that you know. Okay. So then we will focus on what is the analysis and how actually we have to perform this monohybrid cross and what are the points that are important for examination. Please remember here. What is our aim here is, you know about this one. One second I will revise you for your convenience. Parents, capital T, capital T, tall and small t, small t, dwarf. In the next generation, F1 generation. What is the F1 means? F1 means first filial generation. Yes or no? So F1 means it is first filial generation. So this is filial, F-I-L-I-A-L, filial one. What is the meaning of this? One means first, first filial, filial means daughter. It is the daughter, first daughter generation. Since these are the parents and these are the daughters. And when these are undergoing reproduction and they are producing the next generation and this next generation is called second filial generation. Is it clear? So in this way we are using the shortcuts F1 and F2. Clear? So here what we are studying is, see F1, capital T, small t, 100% tall. Already you know. And when it is undergoing the cross, it is producing F2 generation. And here it is producing capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, and small t, small t in 1 is to 2 is to 1 ratio. And tall is to dwarf is 3 is to 1. All these points you know. But here, the way we are understanding this will be slightly different. And what type of questions can be asked from the examination point of view? So please remember here, you know about all these basic points, but we are focusing on examination point of view. So now, 
the questions I am asking. So please listen carefully. So here, whenever you are studying about this, have you ever questioned yourself that this capital T, capital T, whatever they have mentioned, and small t, small t, whatever they have mentioned, which one is male, which one is female? Now you just tell me. Which one is male and which one is female? So now what you will do? You just do that, you just pause the video and you just refer your books, whatever you have studied till now. Whatever you have studied till now, you just go through there. Did they mention anywhere that this is male, this is female, or reverse? This is female, this is male, like that. Did they mention anywhere? They did not mention anywhere. Why? Why they did not mention anywhere? There should be one male and female, no? So then only this pollination will take place and and then next generation will be produced. So which is male, which is female? Whether they have mentioned? No. They did not mention. Why? That logic I will tell you. So for that, you have to answer me for another question. What is that another question? So that another question is, that another question is, whether this plant, what is the, what is the experimental organism for Mendel? It is? P plant, yes or no? Experimental organism, experimental organism for the Mendel is a P plant. What is the scientific name of this? Its scientific name is Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum. Please remember here, since it is scientific name, already you know this. Scientific name should be written in italics. But when we are writing, we cannot write in italics. So we need to underline them. So please underline this. So first letter of genus, capital, and for the species F that it is small letter. Please remember these basic points. So the scientific name is Pisum sativum. Now what you have to do is open the internet and you just search and tell me. So whether this plant is monosexual plant or bisexual plant. If you know that point, then you can answer this. Why they did not mention? That point you will understand only when you know whether it is a monosexual plant or bisexual plant. This is very important. So now let us see what is that monosexual and bisexual. What is the monosexual and bisexual? Monosexual plant, monosexual plant and bisexual plant. So what is the meaning of these terms? Please see this. Please see this. What is monosexual plant means? Mono, single, sex. So only single sex. So single, that means it will have only male. So there are two different plants. One is male plant and there is another one, female plant. So male and female plants are separate. Male and female plants are separate. So each plant is having only one sex. So it may be having either male or this is having female. That's it. So if it is like this, it is called as a monosexual plant. But what about a bisexual plant? Bi means two. That means both the sexes are present in same plant. Please remember here. Here same plant. Plant is same. And it is having both male and female reproductive organs. Please remember this. This is the basic logic we need to remember. Bisexual plant is the one that is having both male and female reproductive organs. Whereas monosexual or unisexual, anything is okay. Unisexual. So it is having only single sex. It may have either male or female. So now you just answer me. So this pea plant is monosexual or bisexual. Simply, you just search in the internet so that you will get it. So now you just remember that this Pisum sativum plant is bisexual. What is the meaning of this? In the single flower, both male and female reproductive organs are present. When both male and female reproductive organs are present, is there any necessary to mention which one is male and which one is female? No need. Yes or no? So this is one important logic. So now, with that, that concept is completed. Now we are stepping into the next level. Suppose, if you are not mentioning 
since it is bisexual plant so here you are not mentioning which one is male and which one is female but here again there is a problem so here another important point is so this pisum sativum is bisexual plant it is having male reproductive organs anthers and female reproductive organs are present yes or no so both male and female reproductive organs are present in single flower and here what type of pollination will takes place now you just tell me self pollination or cross pollination which one will takes place if it is having both so what type of pollination will takes place yes it is correct it is undergoing self pollination please write all these points very very clearly each and every point is an important for examination so pisum sativum scientific name okay it is the scientific name for pea plant okay so it is having bisexual flowers so it is undergoing which type of pollination it is undergoing self pollination what is the meaning of self pollination see both male and female reproductive organs are present in the same flower so the pollen grains from the male reproductive organs will fall on the stigma of female reproductive organ of same flower yes or no so in this way it is undergoing self pollination that point is clear and here the major doubt will start here major doubt will start so please focus clearly what is that question if you understand that then only you can understand why they are present in a different way understood no so the question is very clear see we are saying that it is bisexual plant and undergoing self pollination so you just keep that point aside and now we are studying another important point and that important point is regarding the genotype that important point is regarding the genotype please focus clearly so here what we will do is let us remove this and now we will write here so here let us now now let us see here so already you know that there is a zygote 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 is having how many cells it is single cell yes or no how zygote is formed male gamete please remember this this concept is very very important male gamete and and female gamete male gamete and female gamete they will combine and then they are forming zygote is it clear zygote is a diploid zygote is diploid and here in this case let us suppose that we are talking for pea plant only pisum sativum only so this zygote should form entire plant that is called pea plant pisum sativum so what type of divisions will occur here zygote should ultimately form pea plant so for the production of entire plant it should undergo one type of cell division what type of cell division it should be yes it is mitosis please remember here it is undergoing mitosis so that it is producing the entire complete plant clear now what happens is whatever is the genotype of this zygote the same genotype is present here yes or no don't get confused whatever is the chromosomes that are present in the zygote the same chromosomes the same genes the same dna sequence entire thing is same and the same is present in each and every cell of this plant yes or no then what happens is now i will tell you one simple example suppose the zygote is having capital t capital t then each and every cell of this plant will have capital t capital t only this is the very important point it is having capital t capital t only suppose zygote is having small t small t then and each and every cell of the plant will have small t small t suppose zygote has capital t small t then each and every cell will have capital t small t yes so this is the basic important point that you need to remember yes now we studied two important logics what is that first one is first one is pea plant is having bisexual flowers and it is undergoing self pollination that is the first point what is the second point 
we are saying that each and every cell of the plant is having same genotype yes or no when it is having same genotype now you just see in the parental generation see how questions can be asked now let us start this in the parental generation of the cross what we used capital t capital t is crossed with small t small t please remember here please remember here this is the very very important point for examination under mendelian genetics so here when capital t capital t is crossed with small t small t so we don't need to worry about next generation first let us focus on this why they have given two different genotypes why they have given two different genotypes when same plant is there on the same plant it is having the flowers suppose this is the flower so in the same flower here suppose these are the stamens and this is the stigma and style so in this way both male and female reproductive organs are present so whatever the cells that are present here mother cells they should be exactly same suppose this is capital t capital t so this also capital t capital t capital t capital t yes sir no when it is undergoing self pollination what you need to write you need to write that capital t capital t into capital t capital t yes sir no capital t capital t into capital t capital t one is male and another one is female yes sir no in this way we need to write but actually in the cross what they gave one is capital t capital t and another one is small t small t why they have given like this now you just tell me why they have given like this so what are the different questions that can be asked whatever the parent that was used here is it of same plant or different plants is it of same plant or different plant that is the first question that we need to remember so here simply based on this you can understand that since two different genotypes are there yes they are definitely two different plants this is one plant and this is another plant understood no please remember here please remember here one is capital t capital t plant another plant is having the genotype small t small t that means two different plants were taken understood no so when two different plants were taken which type of pollination will occur self pollination or cross pollination which type of pollination will occur this is very very important point for examination cross pollination will takes place please remember here so these are the important points that we need to learn in 12th class see until 10th class we studied that capital t capital t and then small t small t and next generation capital t small t that everyone knows but what are the important logics here that we need to understand capital t capital t is a different plant and the small t small t is a different plant understood or not so that's why this is tall and this is dwarf this is dwarf these are the first points next point what type of pollination occur between the parents is it self pollination or cross pollination since these are two different plants it should be cross pollination only clear so next important point so next what we are doing is before going to the next generation another important point is also there what is it see here if you clearly see parental generation any example of mendel's experiment you just take parents are having same letters here please here capital t capital t both are capital t's only another parent is having both small t's only so that means based on this another important point is also there what is that important point so here now let us write it once again so that we can clearly understand this what is that important point capital t capital t is crossed with small t small t and these two are parents and here if you clearly see those which are having this same type of allele these are called as alleles don't worry about those terms so these are called as alleles so this type are called homozygous please remember this don't worry about all these terms so in the regular class i can explain about all these terms okay this is called homozygous condition and what is this one that is also homozygous homo means same it is simple term homo means same zygous means 
zygote having this particular condition homozygote same zygote what is same zygote means zygote having same type of allele homozygote and the condition is called homozygous condition that's it so this is also homozygous condition understood no so here the important point in the case of mendel's experiments the parents are homozygous heterozygous what will be the answer they are homozygous individuals this is an another important point for examination next point let us see and here the organisms which are having this homozygous condition are called as true breeding please remember these terms in the ncert they have used these terms these are called true breeding individuals and they are simply called as pure individuals these terms are also very important they will give different statements you just go through some mcq so that you can understand this the parents that were used in mendel's experiment are pure for their characters is the statement true or false yes absolutely it is true because they are homozygous only please remember this and why they are called as a true this is also very important why they are called as a true because if you take any individual true individual when it is undergoing self please remember this this is also very important for examination when we can call some individual as a true breeding or pure individual when it is undergoing self pollination if it is plant when it is undergoing inbreeding if it is an animal okay for in the case of animals mostly monosexual are present no so there self will not occur so in that case we are using the term called inbreeding so that is a different concept leave it aside don't get confused so we are using the only term that is called self pollination when an individual undergoes self pollination it will produce 100% same individual capital t capital t that is tall only these are tall yes or no so this individual when it is undergoing self pollination it is producing 100% same individual so that's why it is called as pure so this is pure this is pure when capital t capital t undergo self pollination 100% tall will be produced when small t small t this is called a dwarf this will give dwarf condition so that when it undergoes self pollination that also will give 100% dwarf individual so that is that's why that is also called as a pure individual so these are some important points that they will ask in examination so now let us go to the next level that is regarding the f1 generation first filial generation so when we are producing the first filial generation now there is a doubt so with that doubt only we have started our lecture no what is that doubt which one is male which one is female we are saying that this is one plant and that is a different plant and both of them are bisexual and then which one will act as male which one will act as a female so this is very important because in the ncrt they did not explain it in the theory but they have explained it in the diagram so that's why we need to focus on this point also okay so now what we are doing is that point so for the convenience what i am doing i am dividing the board into two and whatever the capital t capital t with small t small t these are parents i don't need to write every time these are parents okay same thing once again you just write here capital t capital t with small t small t capital t yes here what actually mendel did and why they are not mentioning which one is male which one is female because here there is a problem what is it see when you are taking two different plants one should act as male another one should act as female suppose in this suppose this is case 2 and this is case 1 suppose in the case 1 suppose capital t capital t is acting as male and small t small t is acting as female this is one case in the reverse in the second condition what mendel did i am not doing all these things actually mendel performed all these experiments and what he did is in one experiment he took capital t capital t as male but in another experiment he took capital t capital t as female this is very very important and small t small t as male understood no so in this way simultaneously he performed the experiment and here another term that is called as 
reciprocal cross please remember this term reciprocal cross what is the meaning of reciprocal reciprocal means it is the simple english meaning for reverse what is reverse sexes are reversed in one cross capital t capital t male small t small t female but here it is reversed so the cross in which sexes are reversed that is called reciprocal cross simple understood no so here another important point is there that point i will quickly tell you so that you can easily understand this is bisexual plant and this is having bisexual flowers and this is also having bisexual flower how you will convert bisexual flower into a particular single sex flower that is a little bit difficult so here what we need to do whenever this is acting as male what are the male gametes and where they are produced in the anthers pollen grains are produced yes or no so in this way what he did from this plant he has simply collected pollen grain that's it collected pollen grains please remember this very very important concept simply collected pollen grain so now this will act as male that's it over from the other plant but here there is a difficulty because in the same flower both male and female are present how you can convert bisexual flower into only female so by removing the male this is very very important and here removal of removal of anthers will takes place please remember here from the bisexual flower if you are removing the male reproductive organs that is anthers only female reproductive organ will present and that flower will act as female flower that's it simple so in this way one is male another one is acting as a female please remember this and now what happens whatever the pollen grains that are collected from this are dusted on this so whatever this flower with only female reproductive organ is there the pollen grains collected from this are dusted on this so after dusting it should be covered so now again this fertilization will take place and finally that will develop into your fruit inside the fruit again seeds will be formed is yes or no so that seeds are nothing but f1 generation keep it there come here so here what happens similarly capital t capital t should be converted into female how by removal of anthers so here female is ready and here collect the pollen grains that's it collect the pollen grains of this and put it on this so here this is a tall and this is a dwarf is yes or no so in this way mendel performed the experiment and here in the ncrt they have used an, another important word removal of anthers is called as what is the term that we are using it is called as emasculation it is called as emasculation what is the meaning of this e e means what removal delete it removal of masculine masculine means male removal of male reproductive organs is called as emasculation so here what are the male reproductive organs anthers so removal of anthers is called emasculation simple term you can easily remember this so by emasculation you are converting bisexual flower into which flower this is also important exam for uh, sorry important question for examination convert it into male flower or female flower female flower that's it understood no so in this way this first step is very very important if you understand this logic with that it will be completed so within just 5 minutes we will complete the remaining process so what are the gametes that are produced by this capital t capital t since both of them are same same type of gametes are produced and this concept is little bit different so that we cannot explain in this demo lecture so that we will study separately so here it is producing single type of gamete that is capital t and a small t small t is producing same type of gamete that is called capital t small t and when these two are undergoing fertilization the f1 individual will be having capital t small t yes or no so here here this is what the individual that was obtained similarly here this is capital t this is producing capital t type of gametes and this is producing small t type of gametes when these two are fused are undergoing fertilization it is giving capital t small t so in both the cases in both the experiments what we are getting we are getting 100% tall individuals here also tall 
here also tall individuals understood na so here so after getting this f1 individual then what he did please remember here it is self pollination very very important for examination f1 individuals were undergoing self pollination self pollination means what you don't need to do any emasculation at all whatever the f1 seeds you are getting you just simply sow them in the soil so that they will develop into plant and they will they will flower and anyhow self pollination will takes place so capital t small t already there and it is undergoing self pollination so other one is also capital t small t so in the next generation it is producing capital t capital t capital t small t and small t small t yes sir no so here for this there is a separate concept that is called punnett square is there that we are not discussing here so here that punnett square we can easily prepare like this okay so here one is acting as male another one is acting as female so female gametes we will write here this is capital t small t and male gametes we will write here capital t small t so simply you just combine these two capital t capital t capital t small t capital t small t and small t small t and the only thing that you need to do is simply count how many of them are there capital t capital t only one is there one is two how many capital t small t are there this is one and this is another one so two are present and what about the last one only small t small t only one is present so this is one so in this way in the f2 generation second filial generation what is the genotypic ratio that is the direct question that will be asked in neat examination one is to two is to one that's it and here you need to write phenotype also capital t capital t is tall capital t small t is also tall this is very very important this is also tall and what about this capital t small t this is also tall but small t small t will give dwarf yes or no so in this way separately if we are writing for phenotype so what is the phenotypic ratio tall is to dwarf tall is to dwarf out of four how many tall are there one two and three three are tall and only one is dwarf that's it yes so with this f2 genotypic ratio one is to two is to one and f2 phenotypic ratio is three is to one and here for this one also since here also it is self pollination exactly same result you will get here that's it so why we are not mentioning male and female now the answer is whether you are mentioning which one is female which one is male there is no difference at all yes sir no this is the important point you should not say that this is bisexual plant that's why they did not mention that will be wrong answer what is the correct answer so in this case in the reciprocal cross both of them are giving 100% same result so when they are giving same result why to mention which one is female which one is male between those two one will be male and another one will be female that's it understood no so in this way the important points are parental generation are pure individuals one is having pure dominant another one is having pure recessive trait so when they are undergoing cross pollination this is very important for examination the f1 is producing dominant trait only tall only is produced but it is not pure because when it is undergoing self pollination the f2 generation produced is having both tall and dwarf that's why f1 individuals are not pure okay and in the f2 generation what is the genotypic ratio we are getting 1 is to 2 is to 1 and the phenotypic ratio we are getting is 3 is to 1 so in the both reciprocal crosses we are getting the same result so that is the reason why we are not mentioning so which one is male and which one is female so simply so these are the data scientific name of the garden pea is pisum sativum and it is having 14 chromosomes and in the case of diploid and the haploid is having only seven chromosomes and it is belonging to the family fabaceae and the type of flowers are bisexual please write it in the notes and here this is how the flower is and this is regarding the stamens total 10 are there nine are present as one group and there will be one separate stamen will be there this is not much important now in the regular class i will tell about all these things okay so this is what the process is so what actually we are doing in the process now we will see so this is how this is how so one is acting as male okay one is acting as male from the male we are simply collecting the pollen and we are dusting on the female and how we are preparing the female by simply cutting this anthers 
So removal of anthracis is called emasculation. See here, within the brackets they have given. So that's why you need to focus on each and every word that was given in the NCRT. Okay? So after this, what happens? So after the cross, now here, after preparing the female flower, you need to protect it. If you are not protecting it, so cross-pollination may happen from some unknown plant. So that's why you need to protect it. That is called as bagging. So then what happens? So then we need to tag it. So then we are performing this experiment. So then what is the pollen from which plant it was taken and ev everything and all the details we are clearly mentioning here. And then what we are doing? We are collecting the seeds and then we are sowing them so that now they will grow into the plants. So now these plants we are analyzing. Understood? No? So after the analysis you will know whether they are homozygous or heterozygous, dominant or recessive, whether they are tall, dwarf, everything, all those points we will understand. Okay? So with this, the demo lecture is completed. So the remaining details, and since it is a demo lecture, I did not talk about all the other concepts. So only those which are related to the cross only I have mentioned. So other points we can continue in the regular lecture. Okay? Thank you so much, my dear friends. We are waiting eagerly to meet you in the regular lectures. Thank you so much.